and kidnappings in all those states, Edo State, Oyo State, Imo State, Kaduna State, Zamfara State, Niger State, Nasura State, Kebi State, and in other parts of the country. Chadet is aware of reports of kidnappings and killings in the Barakazis and other parts of Oyo State, consequent upon which eviction notice was given to Fulani Hessmen on 16 January 2021, sequence of which houses and cars belonging to the Fulani Hessmen were burned in the Gaga, the Barakazis local government of Oyo State. Aware also that in January 2021, government invaded Kaduna communities, killed the traditional head of Baranje village, Dugara, Yahaya, and another resident in Baranje village near Muruku in Chunkun, local government area of the state. Similarly, armed gunshots killed one person after failed attempt to kidnap him at Ogwan Sada in Giwa, local government area. A Haja was also killed by armed bandits along Kingimi Agris on the Kaduna George Road in Igabi local government area. Senate further so were aware that on Friday, 29th January 2021, gunmen clad in military uniform intercepted some vehicles at Idon Village in Kajuru local government area on Kaduna Kashia Road in Kaduna State, abducting no fewer than 19 travelers and taking them into the forest, just like the dangerous Kaduna Kashina Road, there are still reports of kidnappings on the Kaduna Abuja Expressway. Senate notes that in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory on Sunday 24th of January 2021, armed men attacked Rachel Orphanage in Niharati, a large area council kidnapped seven children of the age range 10 to 13 years and also kidnapped a staff member of the orphanage. That this abduction, there are also pockets of reports of abduction in Abuja. Senate notes also that in Ondo State, kidnappers often operate freely on Akure Owa Road or Akumba, Akure Elisha Expressway, Ise, Akoko Ishua, Akoko Road, and other parts of the state. Recently, Government killed a first class traditional ruler, the Olufan of the form of Israel, Adeus. Senate notes further that mass killings and banditry in Kebbi State, either to localize in four local government areas in Zuru Emirates, have extended to Shanga, Yawuri Emirates, and Koko, Bese, Bagudo, and Meyaba local government area of Gwandu Emirates. Senate notes again that in Nasarawa State on Monday 4th, January 2021, government killed the former education secretary of Nasarawa local government area of the state, Malami Salihu, and killed, killed now 20 people along Mungi Sharp Corner, Bogakwari, Gadabuke area of Toto local government area. Further aware, that Ogun State on Monday, 1st of February 2021, suspected hoodlums set ablaze the house of Sri Fulani in Egua, Yewa North local government area, killing one person and scores of cows. Senate notes that in Delta State, in January 21, government killed three mobile policemen, cutted away AK-47 rifles and 120 rounds of ammunition in Mugeli. Ugali North local government area of the state. Note also that in Niger State, between 6 December and 12 December 2020, government invaded, government invaded and launched multiple attacks in Ogu and Tegina communities in Rafi local government area. 19 persons were kidnapped, and the pastor with the Evangelical Church Muni or Ekwa, Jeremiah Ibrahim, was killed in Chukuba. Chiroro local government area of the state. Senate further notes that in Zamfara state, killings and kidnappings have continued unabated. On Friday 6th of January 2021, armed kidnappers invaded Kauri village in Maru local government area and kidnapped six children from the family. Senate is aware that in the Imo state, 
arrest ensued on 25th of January 2023 at Olu when armed members of Eastern Security Network, ESN, clashed with security agents. This led to many killings and burning of properties. Of properties. Senate is aware also that in Abia Street, a few days ago, our members of the Eastern Security Network, ESN, invaded the camp of the Fulani Hesmen in Isi Akwato, chasing them away and killing dozens of cows. Senate is aware that in Edo State, kidnappers often operate freely on Benin Auchi Road at a well at Benin Bypass with the recent kidnapping of Chief Dennis Abuja, a U.S.-based Nigerian who was returning to the U.S. after the youth child on the 31st January 2021 and was killed afterwards after Samson or a ransom had been collected from his family. Concerned that security challenges have led to issuance of counter insurance, issuance of eviction, noticed by some ethnic entrepreneurs and groups posing as ethnic nationalists and champions. Senate further observes that even though many perpetrators of killings, kidnappings, and banditry in Nigeria are illegal immigrants, they are harbored and nourished by Nigerian informants, collaborators, and armed suppliers. Senate is concerned that many Nigerians have injected ethnic sentiments into insecurity issues, and this is capable of plunging the nation into ethnic religious crisis of omnium's proportions. Senate is further concerned that if the present spate of insecurity across the nation is not curtailed, it will lead to a food insecurity, famine, and many farmers can no longer access their farmlands. Senate observes that the nation is entering a very dangerous phase of its governance trajectory characterized by manufactured conflicts, fueled by ethnic and religious entrepreneurs with divisive rhetorics and amplified by irresponsible social media activists and platforms. Senate notes that it is the responsibility of leaders at all levels to address the security challenges of Nigeria. The local actors and authorities should not absorb themselves of responsibility. Furthermore, Senate notes that President Mohammed Buhari has nominated new service chiefs for Senate consideration and hopes the new service chiefs will reject and reinvigorate the security architecture for optimal efficiency and maximal effectiveness. Senate condemns extrajudicial killings, banditry, robbery, kidnapping, and other forms of violent behavior in Nigeria and maintains that Section 43 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended is sacrosanct as every citizen of Nigeria has the right to live and acquire properties in any part of the country. Accordingly, prayers, accordingly, resolve one, urge the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, to direct the National Security Advisor and the newly nominated service chief and the Inspector General of Police to devise a proposal to reject the nation's security architecture and disposition of forces to move effective countermeasures against the current security challenges, particularly in the rural areas. Two, all the state governors to all the state governors to reinvigorate rural governance and convene statewide intercommunal conflicts and dialogue to promote local conflict resolution and inter-ethnic harmony. Three, urge the federal government to immediately embark on an operation to checkmate proliferation of firearms and report the laws against illegal possession of firearms by arresting, disarming, and punishing anyone in illegal possession of arms. Four, all the state governments to implement the National Livestock Transformation Plan, which is a modern scheme designed to eliminate transhuman in order to prevent farmer-hunter conflicts 
and activists highly productive lives of actual sector in Nigeria. Five, urge the security agencies to actively deploy drones and helicopters to monitor forests and ungoverned areas in Nigeria to identify illegal camps of armed bandits. Six, urge the federal government to adequately equip the Nigerian Immigration Services, NIS, and the Nigerian Customs Services, NCS, to police and monitor our borders using modern technology to check illegal immigrants and check mass smuggling of firearms and light weapons. Finally, urge the federal government to resuscitate and inaugurate the National Task Force or Commission to combat the proliferation of light weapons, small arms, and ammunition. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. Mr. President, we're all in denial, especially government. And if we were not in denial, we would have declared insecurity a national emergency. The way we declared COVID a national emergency. Because if we had done that, we would have had multi-sectoral approach to tackling this insecurity. Right now, we are an endangered species. People are going into homes to abduct, to rape, to do all sorts. Hats men are everywhere. We have spoken several and nothing has been done. Mr. President, hmm. posterity beckons because posterity will not forgive us. We are part of the system. We must do something drastic. We must declare insecurity a national emergency so that everybody starts to work on it as we're working on COVID. The figures that are coming out of insecurity are higher than the figures that are coming out of COVID. The deaths are more. So why are we just pretending this thing is not there? Like I said before, posterity will not forgive no. us if we don't do the right thing. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I want to make a special plea that please the screening of the new service chief should be done at plenary. They should come and speak to Nigerians what their intentions are. What are they going to do? It's not going to be business as usual. We need to hear from them. It's not at the committee level or so. They should come and speak to us here. And again, let me commend the president. It's better late than never. At least for eating to the clarion call to change the service chiefs. So this time around, there is need for the service chiefs to address us and address Nigerians as to going forward what will be the situation. Mr. President, I am not here to narrate, to narrate stories. We are fully aware that there are kidnappings, there are killings, and there are clashes between the ex-men and farmers across the country. But Mr. President, there was at a point in time in these chambers the Inspector General of Police was here, and he spoke with, to us about community policing. The question is, what is happening to that community policing that we all agreed and also voted billions of naira to, to commence? Is it that there is no more community policing? Because one of those reasons why we suggested this particular security outfit is to assist in every locality to know who and who that lives in that particular locality. So if it is no longer working, I think the IGO role has an explanation to tell us what is happening. Mr. President, you quite agree with me. I agree with you that those attacking us as a country are not Nigerians. We have lived together for several years and there have not been issues like this. Definitely, there might be people from other tribes, maybe from Niger Republic and Chad, but I want to say this, Mr. President. There is need for us to even look at this country from another dimension. It is one of the plans of our great party to look into the possibility of restructuring this country. And we have set up a committee that have worked on restructuring. And I believe the committee have submitted their report. This is one angle in which we should start looking at. And because inside this restructuring, there is a security issue that has been discussed extensively with borders on the state police. And I believe at this point in time, the creation 
and the establishment of state police, we should start looking in this direction. If truly we want to put an end to this security situation that has been affecting us as a country. Mr. President, very distinguished colleague, I also plead that for those that have lost their lives on all these security incidents across the nation, that we observe one minute silence for all these souls that have been killed one way or the other, either by banditry or by attack by farmers and artsmen, they deserve a one minute silence because they are Nigerians like us. And I want to say, Mr. President, that going forward, there is need for us to put sentiment aside and at least call on the president to address the, the, the country on the security situation that has been uh, facing us. Even to pay condolence messages to those families that have been affected, it will not be out of place. I saw something, Mr. President. I see this motion before us as extremely, extremely important and strategic if we are to continue with our efforts, genuine efforts, at finding peace between and amongst ourselves. <clears throat> Mr. President, I'm afraid we are mixing issues. And we're in the course of this mix-up, we are burying different dimensions of the security challenges that we face as a country. For me, the custodians of peace, the custodians are those of us who are privileged to enjoy positions of leadership in this country. From Mr. President, down to the state governors, down to the local government, and those of us who are elected, we have a duty to make our own contributions towards the understanding, mutuality of interests, mutuality of cohabitations in our country. We owe a duty as political leaders in our various communities. Mr. President, I find it difficult to believe in the 21st century that a governor of a state who has taken oath to protect, preserve and protect the Constitution of Nigeria, which embodies fundamental human rights, fundamental rights of residents, will come openly to ask people who are not indigenous of his state to leave his state on the pretext of something that they are doing. And their cost of law. We have cost of law to make determination on that. The only person I want to, uh, to, to have an exemption. While we see, while we see, in the social media, houses of people being burnt, who are not from the states where the burning is taking place. The only exception I hold, and I want to so, so do with commendation, is the government, the governor of Edo State. He came out to say he will protect. Anybody, any Nigerian who is making a living in his state, a neighbor who commits offense, the cost of laws take care of him. I believe very strongly that we will make better sense if we go into some committee at some stage, Mr. President, to find out exactly the truth or otherwise of these allegations of killings, as and burning of properties of people in states other than, in the, than their own. I so submit. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I want to talk specifically on the matter of whether people were being sent away. No Nigerian is being sent away from anywhere. Criminals are being sent away from the forest where they are. And so, when we now come here and say, some people after doing this thing and they're sending people away, you send the wrong message out. The message is simple. The police, IG, has told us these are criminal elements coming from outside Nigeria. And what we should ask ourselves is, if somebody is a criminal and he is in the forest, what is he doing inside there? And we want to paper over matters of this nature to please whatever. What we want to say is simple. We either want to solve this problem 
And in order to solve the problem, the desideratum is that all criminal elements that are coming into this country from wherever they are must be flushed out. Simply sit up. It's no longer about the Fulanese or the Igbos. It's no longer about the Yorubas or the Kanuris. It's no longer about Northeast or Southwest. It is about Nigeria. And my call to all our colleagues is that that patriot that lives in every one of us, this is the time to allow him or her to lead us in our utterances, in our decisions. Mr. President, as lawmakers, let's remind ourselves and let's go out of this chamber to tell every Nigerian that Section 43 of our Constitution, which grants the right to every Nigerian to live and acquire property in any part of the country, is a section that confers a right as to where you can live and own property. This is different from ownership of land or property. Ownership of land is thoroughly and decisively addressed in the Land Use Act of Nigeria. And it provides for only three means of ownership of land in this country, either by government, federal, state, or local, or individual ownership, or corporate ownership. In other words, even though I have a right to live and acquire property in any part of Nigeria, I do not have a right to trespass on the land owned by any other person in this country. I'm particularly happy about prayer four here, talking on the need to end hard men and farmers' conflict. This borders on these relevant constitutional provisions. Mr. President, it is not the right of anyone, and as a government, we must continue to emphasize this. It is not the right of anyone to trespass on the land that belongs to any other person in this country. And that having been said, sir, I want to emphasize that if we are going to adopt a holistic approach to fighting this war, and we are determined to bring it to an end, as we are fighting in Sambisa Forest, as we are fighting in Yobi, as we are fighting in every other part of the country where this war is raging, we must also take this war to every other part of Nigeria. The governor of Enugu, the governor of Oyo, every one of them must be in a position to take charge of their own local communities. In other words, criminals, I don't care which tribe they, 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 they come from, whether from outside Nigeria, criminals, must be arrested. The police must be awakened in every state. The judiciary must be awakened in every state. Everyone that is caught violating or trespassing on someone else's property must be arrested. Promptly prosecuted. You should round up now. Yeah. Let no one be afraid of being called a tribalist. This is the time for everybody to speak out in the interest of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President. We have over 10 governors here that after governing their state for eight years, they come to the Senate. They are not moving back, they are moving forward. So we should take responsibility as leaders, and Nigerians are looking up to us as leaders. The problem of insecurity can be classified into four, as we mentioned here. Number one is the Boko Haram that we are facing in the Northeast. Number two, the banditry. Number three, the headsmen. And number four, arm robbers everywhere. Well, it's okay that we are speaking, but Mr. President, as you said last time, that we should not be tired. This committee, this Senate should be able today to come up again with either setting up a, home, a committee or ad hoc committee to look at this problem of insecurity as enumerated in the motion by our deputy leader. Nigerians are looking up to us. We should not, we are in government. We cannot say the executive. We are part of the government. And in fact, Nigerians are looking at, for, at us for solution. 
My heart bleeds when somebody is talking about House of Lani. If they are talking about House of Lani, Yoruba, and Igbo, what about you? You are not a Hausa man. You are not a Fulani man. You are not a Yoruba man. You are not an Igbo man. So it's me. I'm not a Fulani. I'm not a Hausa man. I'm not a Kanuri man. And look at the problem we are facing in Borno. I'm not Igbo. And I'm not Igbo. You see, so wait, let's, let's not, uh, let me, so that we don't derail. Mr. Mr. President, I'm not Kaduri. I, th I think, uh, please, uh, Senator Andimi has a minute and a half. So allow him, yes, and don't listen to them, because you are also responding. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Please, let us behave as leaders. This are criminals, as the minority leader said. And these criminals do not settle in one place. They are headsmen out there. These headsmen are not necessarily criminals. I was taught when in one of the videos, it was in our, on our platform, a Fulani man was speaking to a Yoruba man. I think he saw it. And the, the Fulani boy was speaking Yoruba to, speaking, you know, answering him, speaking Yoruba back to him. I don't speak Yoruba. That means that boy has been in that place for a very long time. You can imagine what he will feel if suddenly he's giving quick notice for that place. Maybe he doesn't even know anywhere and his environment is just like that, 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 that area. Let us put our thinking cap, let us take the responsibility as leaders and sit down, set up a committee and look at what we need to do or this country is not doing right about the security chat. Let's dust up your, the two reports that fo fortunately you are the one that was responsible for it and let's look at it again. We should not stop. We should continue telling the government what they need to do. But one other thing that I want to round up with is that the insecurity in the Northeast is now what is affecting everywhere. Because these hatsmen used to come from Niger and Cameroon and that road is blocked. So Boko Haram is not providing them the necessary safe environment to, to rear their cattle, so they move to, 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 to southwest and to the southeast. We should look at this thing more than the way we are talking on this floor. There should be people that will sit down, we need experts to, to, to do public hearing, and then forward to the executive our suggestion. What we know that we have done our bit. But if we don't do it, Sooner than later, this thing will collapse on us and we will be the first victim. God forbid. Thank you. This is one uh, issue that we'll never get tired of uh, discussing in this uh, chamber because this is the most important issue today in the lives of Nigerians. So we'll continue to, to talk about uh, the security situation in the country. We'll continue to partner with the executive arm of government, either in the area of ensuring that there are more personnel recruited to enhance the capacity of the security agencies or making more funds available for them. And I agree with our colleagues who say that uh, we need to have more resources for the security agencies. There's no better investment today in Nigeria by government then making more resources available to our security agencies because security is the major thing that government can do and change the lives of the people for the better. So we'll continue to, to discuss it here, to debate it here. This will not be the last, but the, the tone, the issue, the, the, the main theme should change. That maybe by the time we discuss this kind of thing here again, it should be that we have made a shift that we have moved positively, that we are trying to only make it better. I, I also believe that there must be better and more intense partnership between the federal government and the states. We cannot expect the federal government alone to address the insecurity in the country. I believe that at one point, the state governments are closer to the people. And in fact, even the local governments, 
some of the issues can be better settled at the local level. Yes, because the federal government cannot go and settle two communities fighting in a state or in a local government. But the local government chairman or even the councillor could come in. But what the government, federal government must do is to arm the security agencies properly and well so that they are able to deal with any challenge, any situation that requires their attention. I also believe that um, the Senate, and indeed the National Assembly, has been consistent on the issue of security. In fact, the first motion I moved in this National Assembly in 1999 was on insecurity in the Northeast and the Northwest. That was in 1999. When we had banditry, there was no Boko Haram at that time. It was banditry, and an ad hoc committee was set up. We went around the Northeast and the Northwest uh, to the states to see how the military and the state governments can work together to address the situation. We used to have what they call then quanta quanta. The bandits will just come on the stand on the highway and operate. All they will do is ask everybody to lie, come out of your car and lie down and they'll take possessions and disappear. They are not killing people recklessly like these people are doing today. But the situation escalated to something else and graduated to Boko Haram in the Northeast. So it's something that National Assembly, the parliamentarians will continue to talk about. We should not be frustrated. We should not be discouraged. What we are talking here is be listened to. Even when it appears to us that there is no sufficient implementation of what we are doing. But the, the, the executive listens to what we are talking about. And Nigerians also listen. And of course, some Nigerians will not understand that we don't have execution power. But we can continue to oversight, continue to insist, and be persistent that these are real issues and government that includes us must address the issues. It is also very important. Recently, in many parts of the country, political leaders have decided to throw caution to the wind. Political leaders must be careful. We must be careful of what we say in a very incendiary environment because the people listen to us as their leaders. So if we appear to be divisive, they will find justification in taking actions that all of us will regret. Nobody is saying the situation is okay. The situation is not okay. If you have criminals occupying areas that they shouldn't be, of course the security agencies must take the necessary steps to ensure that they address the situation. But these are criminals, and that is a specialized criminal activity. All other criminals must be flushed out. Otherwise, how do we have peace? Just like Senator Adam Kachua uh, uh, said, we have to address criminality. We have to defeat criminality. But we also have to nip in the bud that desire, that excitement sometimes of people speaking as champions of their tribes and ethnic groups. We are simply leaders, and the people of this country expect us to keep them united. And this is a responsibility that we will account for to the people, and we will also account for to God Almighty who created us and made us uh, the leaders. Uh, finally, I want to also say that when our committees will screen the service chiefs, I'm sure the issues we have been discussing in this Senate and some of the committee chairs have been in this assembly for a long time, so they, they know all the issues that we have been talking about. We should be as exhaustive and as critical as possible when we screen the service chiefs so that they get the impression and the perspective the National Assembly has on this insecurity, because that is going to be our own perspective. The executive may have a different perspective. They, they are concerned, but maybe the way they think we should go about fighting it is not probably the same way that we think we should, we should address this. Let's enrich 
the previews of the service, the new service chiefs, so that they have all the perspectives, and it is for them to go and think of their tactics and strategies and whatever they will do to ensure that they reclaim the insecurity that we have for the security of, of Nigerians. I want to thank everyone uh, once again, and uh, we'll now go for the uh, prayers, and thereafter we take the motion of the year. And that is the DSP's motion. So we take the prayers, prayer one, urge the Commander-in-Chief of Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari GCFR, to direct the National Security Advisor and the newly nominated Service Chiefs and the Inspector General of Police to devise a proposal to rejig the nation's security architecture and disposition of forces for more effective countermeasures against the current security challenges, particularly in the rural areas. Those in favor of prior one say aye. 